We're from another universe. Universes. Nobody's stronger than the Hulk. Well, except for the comic book version, that is. <laughs> The Marvel Cinematic Universe is riddled with strong and powerful characters, plucked straight out of comic book pages and adapted for our television and movie screen. As fans have grown familiar with the multiverse and alternate timelines in all forms of Marvel media, over the years we've also grown accustomed to variations of our favorite superheroes and villains as well. Naturally, with a myriad of interpretations for most characters, some of their abilities and power levels have been altered and changed in different universes, and the MCU is no different. With that being said, join me and let's take a look and compare some MCU characters that are stronger on the page. Let me get this straight. You kidnapped us from across the galaxy so we could, what? Save the universe? Baron Zemo in the MCU is a Sokovian nobleman and former colonel of their armed forces. Becoming a criminal mastermind who sought revenge against enhanced individuals after the destruction of his homeland due to the battle between Ultron and the Avengers, Zemo's eventual actions would cause the events of civil war. Eight years later, Zemo would be broken out of prison by Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and we would get to see yet another side of the Baron, a side that really likes to dance. Possessing a genius level intellect as well as being a master tactician, hacker, engineer, marksman, and combatant, in the comic book Zemo is slightly more powerful and dangerous. Dangerous. Using the Compound X serum to retain his youth and vitality, Baron Zemo does not age like regular humans. Also, Zemo has access to Moonstones, alien power gems that enable him to manipulate gravity and energy, as well as enhance his speed and strength. The possibility of Baron Helmet Zemo inventing or coming across these abilities in the near future inside of the MCU definitely exists, and with Zemo slated to be in the Thunderbolts movie set for Phase 5, I don't think we've yet to see the Baron's last dance. Baron Zemo, Baron Strucker, my head is barren trying to keep track of all this. I'm sorry for that, but much like the Baron in our previous entry on this list, Baron Wolfgang von Strucker was seen briefly inside of the MCU, monocle and all. One of the leaders of Hydra and an expert scientist, there is not much else that we really got to learn or see from von Strucker before he was wiped out entirely. Although vastly similar in the comics as far as looks and historical identity go, there are some notable differences in special abilities. Strucker is not only an expert swordsman, marksman, and military tactician, he was also infected with the Death Spore virus, which shockingly gave him superhuman powers instead of claiming his life as you would expect. Possessing regenerative healing capabilities as a side effect, Strucker can also secrete the death spores from his body, infecting others with the deadly virus. Let's hope the Avengers brought their hand sanitizers and masks and are cool with staying six feet away from each other. Ulysses Claw, or simply the Claw in the MCU, was an arms dealer and crook who learned about the mysterious land of Wakanda and their precious vibranium. Successfully stealing some vibranium-based Wakanda technology, ironically, it came in handy when Ultron removed one of his arms. Now that is what I call a five-finger discount. Finance is so weird. Claw would replace his arm by fashioning the stolen tech into a mining tool that also doubles as a sonic cannon weapon. Unfortunately for Claw, he would meet his demise at the hands of Killmonger during the first Black Panther movie. In the comic books, however, Claw would ascend beyond mere human status, converting his body into an extra physical energy form composed of solid sound. Sound. Becoming virtually immortal and indestructible, Claw uses his prosthetic sound converter which projects intense, high volume, deafening noise. Although Claw sounds super OP by my description, he does have one glaring and devastating weakness, Vibranium itself. Perhaps at some point in the future we will see a variant of Ulysses Claw inside the MCU who has realized his full powerful potential. Centaurian leader of the exiled faction known as the Ravagers, Yondu was also the adoptive father of Star-Lord. Peter Quill. In the MCU, after doing some battle with the Guardians of the Galaxy, Yondu would learn the error of his ways and help Star-Lord and the Guardians defeat Quill's biological father, Ego the Living Planet, giving his life in the process of stopping the world terraforming deity. Yondu seemed to be as strong as your average blue alien, whatever that means. Of course, using his trademark Yaka arrow, he controls by using headgear and whistling. The original Yondu in the comics is much more powerful and conducts his powers in different ways. For starters, Yondu in the comics doesn't wear any headgear. Rather, the red fin on his head is part of his anatomy, and he can lift up to almost one ton. Furthermore, he is a master of the mystic arts and uses a bow to shoot his Yaka arrow instead of whistling. There is a variant of Yondu in the comics that mirrors the MCU Yondu who continues to live unlike the movie. 
but OG Yandu from Earth 691 also met his demise while battling with the mercenary Sovereign. Ah, Quicksilver, how you've been done so wrongly. Pietro Maximoff, aka Quicksilver, brother of Wanda the Scarlet Witch, is quite similar in both the comic books and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For instance, Pietro and his sister were once bad guys before joining the Avengers. The major difference between the two, however, is that Quicksilver of the MCU met his untimely demise during the Battle of Sokovia, saving citizens while fighting against Ultron, whereas the one on the page is not quite so cold. Another difference would be their family lineages. As in the comics, it is widely believed Quicksilver is the son of the supervillainous mutant Magneto, although it's been revealed a couple of times that that may not be the case. During Avengers Age of Ultron, we saw the speedster do what he does best, run really, really fast, but unfortunately not fast enough to dodge bullets flying at him as he attempted to save Hawkeye. In the comics, however, the Maximoff siblings are some of the most powerful beings in all of Marvel. Running up to speeds of Mach 5 and above, Quicksilver can vibrate his molecular structure, destabilizing his anatomy, effectively using this ability to walk through solid structures. Talk about running until you hit a wall. Primarily known in the MCU as a Guardian of the Galaxy, in the comics, Gamora Zen Huberi Ben Titan, say that 10 times fast, is straight up known as the most dangerous woman in the galaxy. Adopted and raised by Thanos the Mad Titan to become an elite assassin after her homeworld was destroyed, Gamora uses the God Slayer sword as her primary weapon. Two major differences between the movies and the comics are that in the MCU, Thanos aided in destroying Gamora's birth planet, and in the books, Thanos had mechanically enhanced her body, much like her sister Nebula. Furthermore, in the comics, Gamora is an accomplished athlete and gymnast, and is proficient with every known form of weaponry in the Milky Way galaxy. Although it hasn't been explicitly stated that Gamora of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is not as aesthetically renowned and knowledgeable in weapon combat as her comic book counterpart, the difference in biotechnological enhancements make comic book Gamora much more powerful. Maybe she'll show off some roboticness in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Maybe. Hulk Smash, Hulk stronger than Thor, Hulk weaker than Hulk in the comics. Although incredibly strong and powerful in the MCU, even becoming a long reigning undisputed champion on Sakaar, Hulk in the comic books has progressed far beyond what we've seen in the movies. Don't get me wrong, being able to stand toe to toe with the likes of Thor and the Abomination is incredibly impressive. However, Bruce Banner's Hulk in the comics has no true upper limit to his powers. No matter what, the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets to the point that his power has been referred to as cosmic or divine, more or less doing everything he can to control and suppress old Jolly Green. In the MCU, Banner has spent the majority of his time not in a rage, instead being intelligible with full control over his powers. From what we've seen in She-Hulk Attorney at Law, it appears that Hulk is headed back to Sakaar, or somewhere else in space, perhaps provoking similar events to that of World War Hulk. If that's the case, then we may be witnessing Max Power Hulk in phases five or six. The cruel and malevolent leader of the Dark Elves, born in a realm of complete darkness, Malekith the Accursed led his people in a war against the Asgardians using the Aether, a weapon that he hoped would revert the universe into a state of darkness. Eventually absorbing the Aether, Malekith was able to manipulate matter and project energy blasts, greatly enhancing his already super elven physiology. Only seen for a brief time in the MCU before being defeated by Thor and his brother Loki, in the comic books Malekith has a much more storied history and has garnered much greater power over time. Much more magical and seemingly possessing all the powers of the Aether-fused Malekith from the MCU, in the comics the accursed Dark Elf has also found himself in control of the Mandarin Spectral Ring, and has even bonded with the alien symbiote Venom. Though it's highly unlikely we'll ever see Malekith the Accursed in the MCU again, perhaps an episode of What If will re-explore Asgardian lore. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ronan the Accuser gained possession of the Power Stone and was able to harness its energy, powering him up immensely compared to any other version of Ronan, but only for a short time. The Accuser was surely set to destroy the Guardians of the Galaxy with ease. However, Star-Lord distracted him with a silly dance-off challenge, allowing time for the Guardians to use the Power Stone against Ronan instead. Wielding his giant mallet known as the Universal Weapon, the differences between MCU Ronan and comic book Ronan are minor, but still present. Where MCU Ronin is simply physically superior to others of the alien Kree race, comic book Ronin has also been cybernetically enhanced. Furthermore, after effects caused by Ronin's interaction with the Black Vortex gave him the ability to create pocket universes, which he uses to trap people within micro-realities that shape themselves in the form of the victim's deepest guilt. Yeah, that's some super sinister stuff. 
Oh, Mandarin, where do we even begin? In the MCU, the struggling actor and slightly inebriated Trevor Slattery was initially thought to be the Mandarin, leader of the Ten Rings terrorist organization. That is, until Tony Stark himself revealed Slattery to be nothing more than an imposter, paid and forced to pose as the Mandarin on film. It would then be revealed that the powerful and mystical Wen Wu, father of Shang-Chi, was the true Mandarin, leader of the Ten Rings army, and wielder of the Ten Magical Armbands. A powerful warlord who conquered kingdoms for millennia, Wen Wu is a master martial artist and swordsman. On top of that, while using the Ten Rings, the Mandarin becomes nigh immortal and gains super strength, speed, and the works, as well as becoming capable of energy manipulation. In contrast, the comic book version of the Mandarin would discover the Ten Rings, which are small and worn on your finger in this case, after discovering alien spacecraft wreckage in a cave. Furthermore, the Mandarin's real name remains unknown, and there isn't really any relation to Shang-Chi. That is, until comics were made inspired by the MCU's new lay of the land. On the page, the Mandarin owns a mechanical flying dragon, a space station, satellites, jet cars, and an interceptor ray. For these reasons, the nameless Mandarin gets a nod in the power level comparisons. Gore the God Butcher is virtually identical to his comic book counterpart in nearly every way, apart from the nose and some other minor details. Most importantly, power level. In the MCU, Gore stumbled across a necro sword after encountering the god he worshipped called Rapu, who he then slayed for his narcissism. In the comics, Null, the god of symbiotes, created the necro sword called All Black, which Gore would stumble across after a battle between two gods one of which being a golden celestial, that Gore would slay with the Necrosword, earning his name. The biggest difference between comics gore and movie gore is the fact that symbiotes exist inside the comics and empower the corrupted blade. Although a brief appearance was made by Venom in the MCU during the Spider-Man No Way Home mid-credits scene, we have not seen symbiotes or heard them called by name in the Marvel Cinematic Universe thus far. To take things even further, in the comics, Gore is described as a master torturer, and at one point was responsible for Thor being unable to lift his hammer Mjolnir entirely. Wanda Maximoff, known as the Scarlet Witch, is one of the most powerful beings within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With that being said, Wanda Maximoff from the comic books is on a whole other level. We have seen both Wandas use familiar powers, such as flight, illusion casting, witchcraft, chaos magic, nature and mechanical manipulation, telepathy, teleportation, and everything else that comes with being an all-powerful mystic. We have even seen both Wandas traverse the multiverse, wreaking havoc and altering the fabric of reality. However, looking closer at the Scarlet Witch from the comics, she is considered the Nexus being of Earth-616. During the events of House of M, Scarlet Witch simply uttered the words, no more mutants, and depowered every single one of them in the process. Okay, not every single one, but pretty close. Proving that she can mess with the multiversal time stream on a level far beyond what we've seen in the movies. If that wasn't impressive enough, this iteration of Scarlet Witch is also bound to the Darkhold physically by body and soul, meaning it's literally a part of her. I predict that Scarlet Witch will eventually realize the full potential of her abilities inside of the movies, and may even be the catalyst for the existence of mutant kind within the MCU, provided that she can get over the whole being quote unquote dead thing that she is right now, but come on, she's not. Oh, James Spader, how I love that buttery mechanical voice of yours. In the MCU, Ultron was an artificial intelligence created by Tony Stark and Bruce Banner using the Mind Stone and was designed to be part of a peacekeeping program, but unfortunately broke bad and went rogue. In the comics, Ultron 1 was created by Hank Pym, designing such sophisticated AI that Ultron successfully hypnotized and brainwashed Pym into forgetting he created the sentient robot entirely. After destroying Sokovia, Ultron of the MCU would meet his demise at the hands of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Ultron in the comics, however, would go through years and years of different models, upgrades, power-ups, and reformations, both possessing the technological enhancements of tractor beams, energy absorption and flight, as well as techno-forming. Comic book Ultron's powers have far surpassed his cinematic counterparts. Merging with Hank Pym, becoming one being called Ultron Pym, he is also assimilated with alien tech, rendering him capable of creating contagious cybernetic viruses. He can also now use the Pym particles to shrink himself down to microscopic levels, enabling him to enter the Microverse, known as the Quantum Realm in the MCU. Is Ultron in the comics more powerful than Infinity Ultron from What If? Well, that's a topic for another video. The Grand Master of the MCU is the ruler of Sakaar who loves gaming, gambling, and manipulating lesser lifeforms. The Grand Master of the comic books is one of the elders of the universe, and the last survivor of a race that evolved just after the Big Bang. 
that already ranks him slightly higher than Movie Grandmaster. Although Jeff Goldblum is incomparable and powerful in presence and humor, the comic book version is obsessive over games and is a primordial being, akin to a god. Using the Mind Gem, which grants him near limitless psionic and psychic abilities, the Grandmaster also possesses the Trisphere, which can transport people all over time and space. A true immortal, the Grandmaster has no known weaknesses, though he does loathe actually getting physical with anybody. The Grandmaster of the MCU may cheat you into giving him what he wants or charm you out of half of the rent money, but the comic book version is one of Marvel's oldest and most powerful entities. Odin Borson, King of Asgard, Father of Hela, Thor, and Loki, tops our list as the MCU character who is much more powerful in the comic book pages than on the screen. Beyond being overthrown, tricked, made out to be a liar, and sleeping for the majority of the Infinity Saga, Odin in the MCU never really got a proper chance to flex his incredible feats. One of the most formidable and wise characters in any form of Marvel media, Odin has unquestionably met his mightiest peak inside of the comics. Wielding the universe-altering Odin sword, manipulating weather, making it rain fire, mystical telepathy, and the ability to endow others with godlike status, Odin's power levels are truly incalculable. And we haven't even brought up the thousands of years he's spent on the battlefield. Although no slouch and most likely chilling in the afterlife realm Valhalla, MCU Odin is still one of the goats. But stacked up against his own comic book self, he's hardly comparable at all. And that's our list. Did we leave anyone out? Should we do a part two? Who do you think is more powerful in the MCU than in the comics? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you hit that like and subscribe buttons for more comparable comic content.